Thanks very much for joining me. I want to take a few minutes to discuss something that is not being discussed adequately in the corporate media, uh, nor in Congress. And that is that right now, today, in Gaza, we are witnessing one of the worst humanitarian disasters in modern history. It is unfolding before our very eyes, and we must not turn away from that reality. And I'm sorry to tell you what I think many of you already know, that we in the United States of America are deeply complicit in what is happening. What we do in Congress right now could well determine whether tens of thousands of people live or die. Let's briefly review what has happened in the last four months. On October 7th, Hamas launched a horrific terrorist attack that killed 1,200 innocent Israelis and took more than 230 hostages. More than 100 of those hostages are still being kept in captivity. That is what started this current war. And as I've said many times, Israel has the right to defend itself against Hamas terrorism. But it absolutely does not have the right to go to war against the entire Palestinian people. And that, tragically, is what we are seeing. As of today, Israel's military campaign has killed more than 27,000 Palestinians and injured some 68,000, two-thirds of whom are women and children. Unbelievably, 1.7 million people have been driven from their homes, nearly 80% of the population. This is more than twice the population of my own state of Vermont. These people have no understanding as to where they will, will be tomorrow or whether they will ever return back into their communities. The devastation caused by Israeli bombardments is unprecedented in modern history. Some 70% of the housing units have been damaged or destroyed. Can you imagine that? The Israeli bombing attacks have destroyed most of the infrastructure in Gaza. There is no electricity and very little water. There are virtually no places to buy bread and basic necessities, as most of the bakeries have been destroyed or shut down. Raw sewage is now running into the streets, and communications are extremely difficult because there is little or no cell phone service available. Despite the tens of thousands of Palestinians who have been injured, there are no fully functional hospitals in Gaza, and just one in three is operational at all. Amid repeated attacks on healthcare facilities, doctors and nurses are still bravely working to save lives, even without regular electricity or basic medical supplies. Israeli bombing and the onerous restrictions placed on aid entering Gaza mean that only a tiny fraction of the food, water, medicine, and fuel that is needed can get in to Gaza. And even when supplies do get across the border, very little of that can reach beyond the immediate area around the Rafah crossing near Egypt. Let's take a deep breath and understand what all of this means for the men, women, and children who are in Gaza today. Not only have they been driven from their homes, not only have most of those homes been destroyed or damaged, not only are they unable to access the medical care or the clean water they need, but unbelievably and horrifyingly, hundreds of thousands of children in Gaza face starvation. Let me repeat that. Hundreds of thousands of children in Gaza face starvation. The UN says that one in 10 children under the age of five in Gaza is already acutely malnourished and the entire population is at imminent risk of famine. What every physician knows is that malnutrition in small children causes permanent physical and cognitive damage. In other words, even if the war ended today, large numbers of children in Gaza will suffer permanent physical damage from what has happened in Gaza. And that's not to mention 
the extraordinary psychological damage that these children will suffer from as they have witnessed all of the death and destruction around them. If nothing changes, we will soon have hundreds of thousands of children literally starving to death before our very eyes. And believe it or not, believe it or not, the situation could even get worse. Right now, 1.4 million people, more than half of the population of Gaza, are squeezed into the area around Rafa, right up against the Egyptian border. Rafa was a town of just 250,000 people before the war. Now there are 1.4 million people there, more than five times the original population. These people are packed into crowded UN shelters or sleeping out in tents. It's a daily struggle for them to find food or water. And in the midst of all of this horror and suffering, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, the leader of Israel's extreme right-wing government, has announced that Israel will soon launch a major ground offensive against Rafah, where 1.4 million people are located. What that means is Netanyahu will soon be forcing these desperate people to evacuate once again. And nobody has any idea as to where they will go. These families, already exhausted, traumatized, and hungry, will once again be displaced with no plan for how they will survive. I struggle to find words to describe this cruelty. And let me state once again that much of what is happening in Gaza now is funded by U.S. taxpayers. These are our bombs and our military equipment that is being used. We are complicit. This is not only an Israeli war, this is an American war. Prime Minister Netanyahu says that all of this is necessary. He says that Israel will only accept quote-unquote total victory in this war. Yet asked recently what total victory would look like, he chillingly said that it is like smashing glass quote into small pieces and then you continue to smash it into even smaller pieces and you continue hitting them, end of quote. The question we must ask ourselves over and over again is how many more children and innocent people will be smashed in the process? And why is the United States helping to fund this humanitarian disaster? It is quite clear that beyond total destruction of Gaza, Netanyahu has no plan. This week, President Biden acknowledged the severity of this crisis. He said that Israel's response in Gaza, quote, has been over the top, end quote, and added that, quote, there are a lot of innocent people who are starving. There are a lot of innocent people who are in trouble and dying, and it's got to stop, end quote. That's President Biden. Well, he is absolutely right. It does have to stop. Then why in God's name are we now contemplating legislation that provides $10 billion more to the Israeli war machine to continue funding Netanyahu's war. President Biden and Secretary Blinken have, stayed, have been trying to negotiate an agreement where Israel pauses its military operation, Hamas releases the remaining hostages, and massive humanitarian aid comes in to help desperate people. We all hope that this deal comes together. But Netanyahu is resisting this proposal. In my view, he is trying to prolong the war to cling to power. Most Israelis rightly blame him for creating the crisis, and they want him out. But if Netanyahu prolongs the war, he can avoid accountability for his disastrous leadership. That is why Netanyahu is ignoring almost everything President Biden and Secretary Blinken are saying. He this week dismissed the hostage deal as delusional and brushed aside U.S. concerns about expanding the ground offensive to southern Gaza. There is a simple question that must be asked. 
How does it happen that, despite waging an horrific war, which has caused massive suffering, despite ignoring the wishes of the President of the United States and the world community, how does it happen that the U.S. Congress is about to send another $10 billion of unrestricted military aid to Israel? No strings attached. It is beyond comprehension to me that Congress would reward Netanyahu even while he ignores everything the President of the United States says. Netanyahu is the leader of the most right-wing government in Israel's history, a man who has dedicated his political career to killing the prospects of a two-state solution. And yet this bill will give him a blank check paid for by the American taxpayer. It is hard to believe but this is exactly what this bill will do. And what's even harder to understand is that in the midst of this horrendous humanitarian crisis, the legislation before us actually contains a prohibition on helping for UNRWA, the largest UN agency operating in Gaza and the backbone of the humanitarian aid operation. Israel's allegations against the agency are serious, and they are being investigated seriously. But you don't starve 2 million people because of the alleged actions of 12 UNRWA employees. The whole world is watching Netanyahu as he starves hundreds of thousands of children. We cannot be complicit in this atrocity. As long as this bill contains money to fund Netanyahu's war machine and this cruel war, it must be defeated. Thank you very much.